Well, hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you my analysis for M57, the Ring Nebula. It's my first image I took with the Edge 8. Let me warn you, some of the data is frightening. Before we get into the data itself, this is what went into collecting the data. So I'm going to show you my culmination method, focus, autofocus, back focus, and, and then I'll get into the support frames as well. I collected data over two nights. The first night I collected RGB. This was July 5th, and I collected 60, 90 second exposures. That same night, I also collected some data using the IDAS NBZ filter, and I collected 19 three minute exposures. Had to wait another five days for the weather to clear up. And I collected more RGB data, 36 90 second exposures. I also collected some darks and flats, but I did not collect them that same day or same night. It was afterwards. And I did have some problems with these, which is also what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm Kurt Zapatello, and you're watching AstroQuest 1. Okay, let's take a look at the collimation business here. So what I did was for collimation, the first thing I did was removed the, or replaced the screws, the original screws with these bobs knobs. The advantage of using these bobs knobs is that they're very easy to use and adjust, especially in, in the dark. And not only that, you will limit your potential to damage or scratch the glass corrector plate. And if anybody's going to mess up that corrector plate, it's going to be me. So um, I, I went right ahead and ordered the bobs now when I bought the scope. The one disadvantage of this is that these are not as tight as the original screws from what I'm told. And therefore, you may have to culminate more often than you would if you didn't replace them. But honestly, it's super easy to do with these things. So I think it's worth it. Now the method I used, I went to a bright star. In my case, I went to Deneb. And then what you would do is you would move the move it out of focus. And when you do that, you should get something like this. When it's out of focus, you'll get those donuts. The stars, the bright star will appear like a donut. And this blackened area, that's actually the corrector, not the corrector plate, that's actually the, the secondary mirror. And if it's like this, it's not culminated. Whereas if it's over here, it's culminated. You can you see the difference? It's when it's in the center, um, then it's culminated. And that's what you gotta do when you culminate it. You gotta move this around by making very, very slight measurements, maybe an eighth to a quarter turn on these culmination screws until you line it up in the center. Uh, that's the best way to do it, the easiest way, I think. Okay, one other thing I should mention um, but before uh, leaving this is, uh, when you're doing your culminating, you probably want to do it on a live view. Now, I didn't do it on a live view. I did it using two second uh, shots, and then I would uh, take another shot, adjust it, take another shot. Now, that was, was a little clunky, and the reason I did it that way is because I don't know how to do the live view using the ASI Air. I'm new to the ASI Air. I know there's a live stacking function, but that's not what I would want. I know there is video mode and that may be what I have to use that video mode but I was worried that it was making a file for it or something like that but maybe I'm don't have to worry about that if you do know please leave a leave a message in the comment section and I provided a link down here to Dylan O'Donnell who's who's, who's got did a great video on this I put that video in the description section okay next focusing so I just eyeballed focus with it, with the ASI Air to start off with. And then I tried to use this autofocus routine. I, I shouldn't say try, I used this autofocus routine, which seems to be straightforward and it seems to work really well. However, I don't know how to do the back focus with my telescope. This telescope is, the focuser is a little bit different than the refractors, which I'm used to. They have the either the rack and pinion or the Crafer focuser, and it's real easy to do back focus 
with this Celestron Edge, you only have one knob, and so that's being used by the the ZWOEAF. So I, I couldn't do it the way I would normally do back focus. There are other ways. I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. The other thing I've noticed with this focuser is that the step sizes are much larger than the ones with my refractor. My refractor settings, I used 40 for the large step and 20 for the small step or something like that, or 10. This, I used 30, 60 on the first night, and I noticed I was looking at the curve, and it really wasn't much of a U curve. It was more like a flat line, the whole thing. There was a little blip going downwards, a valley, if you will, and it looked okay. The next night, I increased the, large, the step sizes, and I did notice that the, it gave more of a dip when it was sa saying it was focused, but I'm still kind of dubious. I'm just playing around with this right now. I did have another opportunity a couple days ago to use it, and I increased it to 500 steps. And that might be onto something because I got a normal or a better looking U or V curve for focusing. So maybe that's what I, I need to use. The weather has been horrible lately, so I really haven't had a lot of opportunity to test anything yet. Let's go take a look at some of my images, uh, or one of my images. I do, I'll do the one I uh, the first night and the second night to see if you guys see any differences. Okay, everyone, I'm here in Pix Insight now. And I told you I was going to show you some real data. So this is, this one right here is Ring Nebula. This was taken on uh, July 5th. So this is the first night I looked. And here's the stars. And it looks pretty focused. I, I have to give that uh, thing credit, that ASAR credit. And here's one from the second night of imaging, which was on July 11th. This one does look a bit sharper. The stars look a little better too, but that may have something to do with the with the culmination. I think I culminated it better on the second night. Actually, the first night I didn't culminate it. So there you have it. I it was a holdover culmination. So I'm I I think the stars look better, maybe because I had a better focus, and may maybe because I actually culminated it. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's take a look at. The back focus now. Now the back focus is the distance between your focal reducer or flattener to your camera sensor. And for the Celestron Edge 8 using the 0.7 focal reducer, it's 105 millimeters. And I had to do some adjustments to get it exactly. And I got a little, I got a video link. I already did this in a previous video. I'll put provide the link in the description. So you may have seen this diagram before. This shows you if your sensor is too close to the back end of the focal reducer or flattener, your stars will appear elongated and pointing towards the center of the image if it's too close. If your sensor is too far away, they're going to be perpendicular to the center of the image. So let's take a look at my uh, image here. And this is the RGB, stacked RGB. There was very minimal processing done. I don't think really any processing was done except automatic background extraction. And if you look at a cursory review of it, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it, it looks okay, at least from this big wide field version. So I, the, so the conclusion would be that it's pretty close. However, let's take a look um, in a little more closer detail in PixInsight. All right, so I've got Pix Insight open here, and here's the here's the image. So let's take a look at the corner here. Oops, I'll just zoom in, move it over to the edge, and we can see they're sort of elongated, and they're they look like they're pointing towards the center to me, anyways. All right, let's go to the other corner. You you can already see that yeah they're they're pointing towards the center. Let's go down. Now we're at the bottom right, and it's pointing up towards the center. And now we'll come back to the bottom left, and yeah, so. Although from a wide field, it looks okay. If you really zoom in, you can see there is, they're, they're pointing towards the center. So that indicates that the sensor is too close. So I do have some spacers to take it to at least one millimeter, but I, I'm gonna need more, I think. 
I did order a three millimeter spacer and when that arrives, I'll test that out as well. But again, I, I'm, the weather has been horrible, so I, I, I can't test any of this stuff out until I have some clear weather. All right, let's go take a look at some other stuff. Okay, well, now what you've all been waiting for. If you wanted to see what bad data looks like or bad subframes, you're in the right place. So I'm going to start off with showing you my IDAS NBZ filter stuff. Uh, this turned out to be so bad, I really didn't use it. Um, I used part of, uh, part of it, and I'll go into that in a few minutes. And then I'll show you the RGB data, which I did uh, piece together and managed to make a, a decent image with. So I'm going to show you all this stuff using uh, PixInsight. Okay, well, here it goes, folks. Uh, now, don't get scared when you see this uh, image here. It, uh, it does resemble a horror movie, but uh, don't get scared. So this is my first um, data. I used flats and I used darks. And this was the data f using the NBZ filter. And this is just <laughs> horrible looking. All these dust bunnies showed up. And I don't know if it was the flats that made them more. You know, the, the idea of flats is it's supposed to take these away, not make them worse. And then I had this reddish whatever. And it certainly didn't take, make it flatter at all to, to me anyways. So then I had the bright idea of not using the flats and just using the just using the darks. So let's see what happens when I did that. Ah, this doesn't look bad at all. It looks much more usable than that thing. Notice I have this thing around it. I know what that is, and I'll tell you what that is in a few minutes. What why it's why it's edged off here like that. Let's take a look at something over here that I did keep. The only thing I kept out of this was this outer edge. Uh, where it has that hydrogen, uh, oxygen, gas out, outskirts. The NBZ filter successfully brought that out. And I did manage to add this to the color image, that portion. That's the only thing I used off this. Everything else is, is, is garbage. So let's see if the, if the darks do anything. So I decided to take an image, and this is what it looks like without the darks. This is just a pure color. And you can see this is the amp glow. So the darks actually did their job uh, pretty well. They took out that amp glow on this image. So what is this outside area here? This is actually my filter drawer. Turns out I didn't have it set in there properly. There's actually a, one of those little grub screws. There's a grub screw that holds the filter drawer in place. I didn't know about it when I first started imaging with it and it wasn't sitting in there properly and therefore it came loose. And that's what this outer edge is. It, it was on one of my darks as well. So I had to retake the darks. All right, let's take a look at the colored, the RGB uh, images. Now here's from the first night, that same first night, this is what I got. And this, this looks pretty poor as well. I mean, you can see all these dust bunnies in here. It just it looks awful. And it even has that little blip there from the filter drawer, which, like I said, one of the flats, I, I remember the darks that I did, I had that filter drawer open as well. So here it is with just the darks and not the flats. It looks much better, okay? And it still has that artifact from the uh, the darks, but at least the not using the flat frames, it seems to be an improvement. Remember, the idea of flats is it's supposed to help, not hinder it. And here it is, the second night that I imaged, uh, using the second night's data, and I had to redo the darks, and it took away that, that artifact. This artifact was caused by the filter drawer, and when I redid the, the darks, um, I made sure the filter drawer was securely uh, mounted. So I can work with this, and this is what I made my image of. Okay, let's look at some of the support frames. So here is the the flat frame from the NBZ filter, and you see these same dust bunnies on here. They're there, it's showing up, and it doesn't look bad, but for whatever reason, it's uh, it just didn't work. Here's the master dark for the 180 exposure, and that doesn't look too bad at all, actually. 
there's where the amp glow is so that works now here is the master flat on the first night when i did the colored image and you can see again here's the those dust bunnies and it looks very similar to that uh one f using the nbz filter i redid the flats again after more trials and this is what i got the the, the next time that i did it and you know i i don't know what to make of these flats i mean i still see those same dust bunnies which they're there they're supposed to that's what they're there for they're supposed to remove the dust bunnies but it actually seemed to work um the second time i did it and i'll, I'll go back and show you the final image here is the the first time the that i did the darks and this is what I'm talking about. This, I did this dark with that filter drawer was not secured. And you can see here's that artifact in it. It's down here and it comes up here. Now here it is again when I did it a couple days later after I found out what the problem was. And you can see this is a much better dark. Okay, with all this uh, showing you guys uh, st bad images, is there anything good that came out of this? Well... Here, this is the image that I wound up with after I processed it. And it actually doesn't look that bad. I've got the nice, I can actually see the star, the central star, which I never was able to do before. And even this other offshoot star, there's another galaxy. I can't remember what's NGC 1316 or something like that. But that came out pretty well. And I actually managed to use a little bit of that, um, that horrendous looking data from the uh using that filter <laughs> you see I, I what i did is i blended that outer area in with the color uh, rgb image here and wound up with this so i thought that was kind of interesting and just for giggles <laughs> i was having fun i decided to process that dust bunny one of the dust bunnies there's a really prominent dust bunny right here so i i processed it with this dust bunny in here as well looks like a ufo Okay, let's go take a look at the conclusions, and then I'm, I think I'm done with this uh, video. Okay, for conclusions, I should culminate or check culmination every imaging session, at least for now. They say it should hold for a while, and I'm just going to keep checking it, at least uh, until I get some confidence on how long the culmination is going to hold for. Focus looks okay, but I will still try different settings, and it's very easy to do using the ASI Air. And when I find the exact settings, I'll be sure and let everyone else know about it. Back focus. Back focus is, back focus is close as it is. However, I will still adjust it in order to improve on it. All I need now is clear weather. <laughs> the dark frames look good, and they're doing their job well. However, I'm still not happy with the flats, so more work is going to be needed before I uh, use them consistently. I did buy a new LED light panel uh, that I uh, that I just received, so I'm going to try to redo flats and see if uh, I can play around with that in order for some improvement. Okay, well, I think that's all. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm sorry I'm tongue-twisting over this video, but I just thought it was uh, an important one to do. We'll see you next time.